Hello, I'm Jim Richards. I want to welcome you to Impact Cyber Church, where people from all over the world go to church at different times. Man, I'm telling you something, this is incredible. People can go to church on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday, whatever day and time works for you. You can come and you can commune on the Word of God. You can use these for small groups. We've got people all over the world using these programs in different ways. And I hope you're getting blessed personally, and I hope you're using this to bless and strengthen your friends. Listen, today we're going to talk about something that is so important. We're going to talk about your first impulse. Because remember, we're getting into this whole concept of choosing life or death, making a decision about what you're going to have in your life. And so many times you get in situations where you make instantaneous decisions that afterwards you come back and you think, man, I wish I hadn't decided that. Well, we're going to learn something about how to make the right decisions instantaneously and effortlessly. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And don't forget, impactministries.com. You can always view these programs. This is usually the part where I give you the opportunity to download a free message. But this month, I am going to let you download an entire complete free series, one of my very best series on goal setting. It's called Power Tools for Goal Setting. And I'll tell you, this is the stuff I teach people in workshops and charge a lot of money for it to, in businesses so people can learn how to live their dreams. The special offer that I'm going to have for you this month, Choose Life, is a great series and you're going to need this information, but this series on goal setting Really, you just need it. You just need to have it along with this information. So I don't want you spending that much money. I just want to give it to you. And the only way you can get this is to download my free mobile app and to say yes to the push notifications. Or if you already have my mobile app, go in and check yes to the push notifications so that we can be sure and get this to you. This is gonna help you live your dreams. If you watched the program last week, you realize that we are talking about choosing life. And that just seems so absolutely asinine, choosing life. Now, we're not talking about abortion issues, abortion or not abortion. We're talking about the fact that God himself said, it is up to you to choose life if that's what you want. It is up to you to choose blessing if that's what you want. Now, you know something? Everything about what we've been taught in science, Everything that we've been taught about medicine and health, everything that we've been taught about the universe, and everything we've been taught about God is based pretty in some degree on the lie of fatalism or determinism. In other words, you know, we have been taught that we are victims and that, and that really, if you get sick, it's because you've just got the genes for it. If, you know, things are going to happen, they're just going to happen. You have no control over your life. You have no control over destiny. And God is, is some abstract sovereign God who doesn't even keep his own word. And he just does what he wants to do. None of that is biblical. I want you to realize that. Not one part of that is biblical. We were created in the likeness and the image of God, and we are called upon to function in that likeness in the exact same way God does. That's why Jesus himself said, have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith, as they used to say back in the 70s and 80s. We operate faith the same way God operates faith. And if you didn't see last week's program, go back and watch it, because I go into this concept about how God operates faith. <clears throat> and it's not mystical, it's not far out, and, and it's easy to understand. And you know what? It's easy to do. That's why the Apostle Paul said, look, don't, don't, don't ask who, who's going who's gonna, to uh, uh, die and, and, and descend and bring this back to me. Who's going to ascend up to the heavens and, and, and you know, bring this to me? He said, look, it's the word of faith. It's near to you. It's even in your mouth. But we have made faith so complicated and so unscriptural that it's just almost beyond comprehension. I want to tell you something. A big part of faith gets down to the willingness to make faith decisions. And today we're talking about your first impulse or your first decision, your first response. And I'll tell you so many times our first response is the response that's going to make the difference in life or death. Now, everything in this series, I want to say this, everything in this series is designed to influence your beliefs or the beliefs of your heart so that choosing life becomes a natural, spontaneous, 
inherent way of functioning so that you don't have to think about something. You do not have to struggle about it. See, the supernatural power of making decisions uh, uh, it occurs when it flows out of the beliefs of your heart that are based on the promises, the identity, and the nature of God. You know, that's why whenever, whenever I offered this series, you know, we started videotaping this series, and, and, and I went back to Rick, and I said, and, and to some of, our, some of our team, I said, I just can't do this because because these people, if they're really going to make this journey, they got to have more than I'm going to give them in this series. Even in the series that we're providing that goes beyond the broadcast. And that's why you can get the, the, the free series, Power Tools for Goal Setting, through our app uh, and, and start using it right away. Because it, it is the exact accompaniment that you need for this series that's talking about the supernatural power of making decisions. So we, we want to get you through all this. So now remember, I'm going to just review real quick, like choice creates mind maps. In other words, when we make a choice, the, the, literally the neurons in our brain start wiring up with all of the ways that we know how to fulfill that choice. When we make a choice based on our trust for God, we open our heart up to the Holy Spirit to begin to lead us down paths that we have never traversed before. Now, in a certain manner of speaking, choices are a means of exercising authority over our life. See, we have authority, and sadly, nearly, you know, for I don't know how many centuries, the, the church and believers have tried to use authority over everybody else. We have authority over us and over the, what happens in the world in general. And what happens in the world in general, it's a collective authority. But what happens in me, it's my authority. And the word authority means the right to do something. I have the right, and not only the right, but the responsibility to make the decisions that I need to make, the, the decisions that are consistent with God's Word, the, the decisions that, that will move me in the direction that God has called me and every believer to live in. So <clears throat> we talked about it last week. The very first step is deciding where you're going, deciding the destination or deciding the outcome. And we went into all that. If you didn't see last week's program, be sure and go back and watch it because, because we got all kinds of ways that we come up with excuses for that. But you got you to realize that what we want to do is we want to make decisions based on the Word of God. We want to make decisions uh, that are congruent with and consistent with everything that God has ever said. And, you know, we read the scripture last week from the, from the book of Deuteronomy where, where God says, you have got to choose life and death. You've got to choose blessing and cursing. That is your choice. If you don't make that choice, then, then you default to what's happening in the world. Well, the whole world is under the influence of sin, under the, the, the mindset of sin and every, everywhere around us and everything that's happening. And the world is working by these laws of physics that says everything tends toward degeneration or chaos. Well, whenever we make decisions based on the Word of God, we enter into that realm called the kingdom where th those laws don't work in our life. Everything in my life doesn't tend to chaos. Everything in my health doesn't tend to chaos, and neither should yours, but it will if you don't make decisions. Now, <clears throat> faith is just simply trusting God. And we talked about this in other programs. I want you to understand something. Making a faith decision doesn't mean you're going to make a decision and then you're going to try to create the outcome. You're going to try to force the outcome. You can't do that. You cannot make the outcome happen. But what you can do according to the Word of God is you can believe something in your heart. And, and when you believe in your heart, then ultimately you will speak it just like God spoke things. The speaking, the speaking is not the is not first. The speaking doesn't make the faith. The faith produces the speaking. And then, and then you just have to believe and not doubt. And it, it's, it's really all pretty simple. It, you know, you, you, may ha you may want to look at my faith series where we talk about, uh, I believe it's faith like you've never heard it, or, or just look on my website where we talk about the five phases of faith because I'm telling you, faith is incredibly simple. But here's the great thing. You are not creating anything. When you make a choice 
based on the promises of God. You don't have to do anything to make that choice come to pass. And here's the amazing thing. God really doesn't have to do anything out there to make that choice come to pass. But I'll tell you what will happen. If you make a choice for where you want to go, and if you're fully committed to God, it's not really just a matter of God taking you down this path so that externally you fulfill this goal, you reach this uh, destination or objective. But you see, here's the great thing. God's not interested in you having prosperity as much as He's interested in you being prosperous. He's not interested in you finding love as much as He's interested in you being loved. In other words, when we pursue and make the choices based on God's Word from our heart, it's not a matter of making an external uh, uh, journey. It is a matter of becoming the person who can live this life. And when you believe, when you make a decision out of your heart, then you'll always follow the path of life. You know, life and death are always before us. So when, when we make these decisions to trust God, everything in this universe that God created to give life starts coming together to fulfill that. And, but more importantly, the Holy Spirit in us starts working so we can be that person. Listen, I'll be back in just a moment. Don't run away. Our offer for this month is the supernatural power of making decisions. And it is an incredible, incredible offer that's going to help you make a journey into a whole new quality of life. But I want to give you for free a power tool for goal setting package that's going to help you. It's going to work with this series that we have. And the way you get that for free is to download my mobile app and turn on the push notifications. Or if you already have my mobile app, turn on the push notifications and we're going to send this out to you. It's going to change your world. You know, when the Apostle Paul talked about putting on our spiritual armor, people turn that into this concepts of warfare and fighting. But all it really was was an analogy about all the different ways that we really equip, our, renew our mind and prepare ourselves internally to, to really resist what's happening in the world around us, what's happening in temptation, what's happening or what could happen to us if, if we're not properly prepared. But all of those things have to do with your thoughts, with your beliefs, with what's going on internally. It's not about going out and trying to fight with the devil. The devil has already won. I mean, already lost, excuse me, Jesus has already won. And so we don't need to go out and fight with the devil, but we have to deal with our own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And you know, one of the things that he did, he said, he said, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Well, the gospel of peace is the good news about the fact that God made peace with man through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel of peace is based on the covenant of peace that God made with Jesus personally, and it's described in Isaiah 54, where God tells Jesus, you know, after He hung on the cross, He said, even though I had wrath on you, even though I turned my back on you, you know, even, even though I let you go through all of these things, I will never, ever, ever pour wrath on you again. You'll, you know, my, my covenant of peace will never depart from you. And the thing is, since God made this peace covenant with Jesus and not with us as individuals, then the fact that we are in Jesus means that we are partakers of the peace that God has with Jesus. So if God swore to Jesus, I will never pour my wrath on you again, then obviously if we're in Him, He will not pour His wrath on us. In other words, for God to do anything to me, He has to do it to Jesus first because I'm in Jesus. Now you stop and think about that and you realize, man, all the things I blamed God for, all the things that I thought God was doing to me, God swore to Jesus He would never do those things to Him. And if I am in Him, I share in that covenant with Him. And so in this, in this book, in the book of Ephesians, where Paul is talking about having your feet shod with the preparation, that word preparation in the Greek means something like uh, um, a thorough preparation that the, uh, uh, or, or have your feet shod with preparation of gospel peace. It's a, it's a thorough preparation. It's a stability that comes because you've studied something out, you've meditated on it, you have pondered, and you have thoroughly prepared yourself to have your feet shod with the good news of peace. Now, in a combat situation, a soldier understands 
that they have to maintain their footing. So the people that were reading this in Paul's day, they understood what he was talking about. If you lose your footing in a battle, you're probably dead or, or at least injured. And so your footing is how you keep balance. Your footing is how you stand upright. Your footing makes you able to move around and respond properly to whatever's going on around you. And so the thing that gives us footing is the gospel of peace, having a mind, having a thought, having our beliefs thoroughly, thoroughly equipped, thoroughly, thoroughly established in this gospel of peace because the gospel of peace is the message about the covenant of peace. So this means that when anything happens to me, my first response, if my feet are shod with the gospel of peace, it means I'm going to move around in such a way that I'm never going to lose my balance because the thing I'm going to be standing on, the thing that's going to continually give me footing and stability is the fact I know there's peace between me and God, which means no matter what's happening in my life, it is not God bringing the pain. It's not God bringing the suffering. Every good, every perfect gift comes from God. You know, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I've said for, I've said for 30 year, 35 years probably that the greatest trick of the enemy is not to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus told us he was going to steal, that the thief would steal, kill, and destroy. The greatest trick of the enemy is to get religionists to preach that it is God that's stealing from you. It's God that's putting you through pain. It's God that's putting you through this suffering. So we blame God for those things that go wrong in our life when in fact we are the ones letting them happen because Satan's a defeated foe. He can't really do these things to us unless we believe for him. He can't do these, he can't force us into anything unless we're afraid of him. He can't work in our life unless the way we think is harmonious with the lies that he has in, interjected into the world. You know, that's one of the reasons I think every believer in the world should read my apocalypse book because I'm telling you, you will understand more about how the enemy works in the world and ultimately in your thinking than you have ever understood. I, I promise you this is going to open it up in a way that you're not going to be afraid of the devil. You're going to understand the deception that works out there and you're not going to give into it. But back, back to what we're talking about today. So, you know, in the parable of the sower and the seed, which I call it the great heart physics parable because it's, it's, it's one of the clearest parables that tells, tells us about the power of working with our beliefs and how that the Word of God only produces fruit in our life to the degree that we influence our heart with that Word. Now, when the sower goes out and plants seed, we are told that the very first thing that happens is that the devil comes along and these birds come along and pick up the seed. And those birds represent the devil. Now, one of our problems when we think about Satan or the devil or how, you know, uh, uh, how he works in our lives is that we start getting into these concepts, these doctrinal concepts about what we think he can do, what we think he can't do, yada, 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 and it just leads us down an endless path. You know, the word devil comes from a Greek word that means a, an accuser, and, and, and really a, a false accuser. He's a liar. He's an accuser of the brethren. So rather than trying to think about the devil personally in this parable, I think we would gain a lot more traction if we would realize, realize that based on that name, based on that word devil, we know that the first thing that comes when the promise or when the word of God is sown into our life, first thing that comes is accusation. And it's usually going to come in the form of self-accusation. And it's not going to be because the devil speaks into our mind. Forget that. That's not the devil speaking into your mind. That is you speaking into your mind based on what you have come to believe about yourself. Now remember, your heart, more than anything else, houses and embodies all of your beliefs, feelings, and emotions that you have about who you are. Your sense of identity is housed in your heart. That's why faith is a matter of a heart. Love is a matter of heart. All of these things that that are only genuine if they come out of who we are, are all heart issues. Now, there's things that you can do in life that have nothing to do with your heart. You're just doing things, 
you know, you're, you're doing math. Two plus two is four, whatever. You know, that has nothing to do with your heart. That's just information, and those are just things that you are doing externally. But all of the things that make life work, they only work as they should when they are coming out of our sense of who we are, when we're genuine and authentic. And so, <clears throat> so whatever is in your heart, whatever you believe about yourself comes out. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you when it comes out the quickest is when something happens in your life that's unexpected, when you get surprised by something, especially if you get surprised by something negative. So let me ask you this. Because, see, see, we want you to be able to choose life but not repent of, of that decision. You know, there's a big debate out there in the world today about repent. People fuss about whether you should repent, shouldn't repent. And, and, and I understand the debate. And I understand it because of what religion has done in the past. We're confused about these things. But forget about religion. Don't worry about what the church did in the past. Don't worry about how any religious person messed something up. See what the Bible really says about it and trust God's Word, not everybody else's. Don't, don't interpret God's Word based on history. Uh, interpret God's Word based on God's Word, based on what the words mean. You see, God, the Apostle Paul warns us about, um, about a repentance that is nothing more than the sorrow of the world. In, in other words, uh, uh, and he's addressing a situation where someone has done something that they shouldn't have done and they've repented. And he says, man, I, I hope this isn't just the sorrow of the world working in. See, the sorrow of the world is the kind of repentance that you have when you get caught. Sorrow of the world that works with you is when you change your mind and it is only solely based on living in the consequences of your decision but it has nothing to do with you as a person growing and you as a person becoming someone who would do it differently. See, I don't want to be someone. Now, you got to start where you start. I'm not an idealist here. And usually we start any right decision just because of the pain that we're going through and we're suffering and, and we don't want to be here. And that's great. That, you know, when, when pain comes into your life, when guilt, shame, or pain comes into your life, it, all it should really be is a warning sign that how I think, how I see things or whatever is not healthy. I need to think and see things differently. And then you, then you come over here, you renew your mind, you come over here and put on the truth and you do it God's way. <clears throat> but Paul said, he said, he said, this repentance, this is the sorrow of the world. It just goes away when the circumstances goes away. But he says, there is a repentance, you know, that, that leads you to life. There is a repentance that takes you down this road. Well, see, that repentance is a changing of your mind. It's about, it's about making a decision, a decision with intention and a decision with purpose. And you see, we want you to know how to choose life beyond just the fact that you're in pain, just beyond the fact that you're broke, or just beyond the fact that you're sick. We want to move you in this place of choosing life because this is the person you want to be, because of, 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 who, you, of who you believe you are in Jesus, what you believe that Jesus has done for you. So, so as you establish your heart and who you are in, in, in life, what would I look like? What would it feel like? What would I be doing with my life if, in fact, I was living life to the fullest the way Jesus said I could? And, and, and as I begin to move in that identity because I trust what Jesus did, trust who I am in Christ, then that becomes a heart belief. And when it becomes a heart belief, my first impulse, my first response to a situation, not always, but nearly always is the reflection of what I really believe in my heart. Come back and join me for my mentoring moment. Don't forget, I've got a free offer for you this month, Power Tools for Goal Setting. I'm telling you, it's one of the best teaching series I've ever done on goal setting. But the way you get this is to download my mobile app and say yes to the push notifications. That's the only way you can get it because it's going to come to you through a push notification. Also, if you already have my mobile app, be sure and go back and make sure you have turned on the push notifications. I got a lot of things I'm going to be sending you to help you fulfill your goals, but you got to have the app to get it. This year, we're advancing our Operation 1 billion. In other words, we are really stepping it up so that we can reach 1 billion people for the Lord Jesus with the gospel 
of the kingdom. Now, Jesus said that before he can return, the gospel of the kingdom has to be preached to the ends of the earth. Of not just the gospel of conversion, not just talking about Jesus, not just talking about getting saved, but the gospel of the kingdom. That's where Jesus is Lord. That's where we enter into this realm called the kingdom of God. That's where we usher in the return of the Lord Jesus to establish his kingdom here on earth. I am so excited about what we're going to do this year. Listen, if you've got my mobile app, you're going to be getting testimonies that will tell you about what's happening around the world as we're training people in Operation One Billion. Or if you sign up for our blog or sign up for all of our notifications online, you can get this. I want to keep you informed. I want you to see what's happening. I want you praying for and giving for the very best things in the world to happen for us. By the way, in case you're wondering why we call this the mentoring moment, it's because God called us. God called every ministry in the world to make disciples, not unto ourselves, but disciples unto the Lord Jesus. So if you are not if you're not taking the word into your heart and equipping yourself to follow God, you're not becoming a disciple. And we want you to become a disciple. Now listen, this is one of the earliest heart physics exercises I ever worked out. I'm going to run through it real quick. And it'll be in more detail in the CD series. But you take a promise of God and you quote it. For example, if you're, when you're struggling with sickness, by his stripes, I am already healed. You personalize it. Father, I thank you that I'm in Jesus. I thank you that he died, and was raised from the dead. And I thank you that I'm in him. Therefore, by his bruising, I am healed. And healing is mine right now. And I'll tell you, you just sit quietly and you wait and you see what thought, feeling, or emotion immediately pops into your mind. That's that self-accusation. It m immediately pops into your mind to say, no, or you feel embarrassed, or you feel ashamed, or you feel condemned, or you think you did something wrong. And then you've just got to take yourself down a real simple process. You've got to ask yourself some questions. Number one, did Jesus do anything about this feeling that I'm having, or this thought that I'm having? Did he do anything about it on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection? Yes or no. Either you believe it or you don't. If you don't, you've got to go back and read the Bible and, and learn about the resurrection. But if you, yes, he did. All right. Then can I do anything about this? feeling that I'm having that's resisting, that's accusing me, that's saying that there's a reason that healing's not mine right now. Yes, I can. What can I do? Well, I can make a choice. I can use my authority as a believer. So what will I do? When will I do it? And you, you just come down, the, down to this thing. So basically, you take that thought, feeling, whatever it is, and you give it a name, and then you simply send it away in the name of Jesus. And then you worship God, you put your attention on Him, and you go back and you quote that scripture again. And you may find another thought, feeling, or condemnation. And you may go through 10 or 20 levels of negative feelings until you have peace. When you get to the place of peace, you're ready to put on the promise.